praise the Lord, everybody. God is so good. And truly the Lord's mercy, it endures until the end. Oh, I'm excited about God today. I'm excited to be a daughter of the Most High God, a God that is able to do all things. Hallelujah. A God that can speak and it is. A God that declares, hallelujah, he will never leave us nor will he forsake us. He's proven his love to us. He's done great and mighty things. And for that, I give God all of the praise. I thank him for his love and for his mercy and for his faithfulness and for his, hallelujah, even forgiveness of sin. Oh, we needed to be forgiven. Hallelujah. Because of what Adam did back in the book of Genesis, you can read about it. He disobeyed God and he ate from that tree of the knowledge of good and evil and then from there it just snowballed but God had a plan and that plan's name was Jesus hallelujah the son of God and yes I believe that Jesus was born I believe that he was God in the flesh Emmanuel with us got the sons got the father and got the Holy Spirit and these one three are one Oh, yes, I believe that he went about doing good. Hallelujah. And so that's what I want to talk about in this series as the Lord leads us through this series. Hallelujah. Jesus, one day after he had been born and circumcised in the gospel of Luke and, you know, time had passed, his fathers went, his father and his mother went to Jerusalem, as was their custom to celebrate. And something happened on their way back. The mom discovered Mary, oh bless her, hallelujah, discovered that Jesus was not in the company. <laughs> so they turned around and went back to Jerusalem looking for the Savior. Can you imagine Mary, how she was must have been panicking? <laughs> You know, Mary done lost the Savior. Hallelujah. But he was not lost at all. Hallelujah. And that's where our series is going to begin with this verse, our foundational verse. And we'll just build on that as the Lord leads us. Hallelujah. We'll go verse by verse scripture. Hallelujah. Looking at the words and seeing what does God have to say about this situation that happened that no doubt had Mary upset. It says in the Gospel of Luke, I want to make the 49th The foundational verse. scripture says, and he said to them, why do you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? Hallelujah. The title of this series is What? The Gospel really? of Luke, the second chapter and the first verse declares, And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Curanius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Oh, I like how we can see the um, sovereignty of God and the providence of God in this text. And the way that we can see it is because here, you know, Caesar oppressing God's people and oppressing the people of that day, you know, sending them to be registered so that they know how many should be paying taxes. But even though this was taking place, this census, this registration, you know, thinking that, you know, they were doing something. All the devil and all the people um, were doing that were in charge of this registration was pushing Jesus into the prophecy of his life. Hey, glory. I came to tell somebody it doesn't matter what the devil is doing or who the devil is using to try to destroy you, to try to oppress you, to try to make you, you know, bow down. 
I want you to know that God is in control and the providence of God and the sovereignty of God will always override the devil. Hallelujah. The devil has no authority over God's people. Yes, we have to abide by the rules of the land, but ultimately God is in control. And the way we can see in this text that God was in control, hallelujah, and that this thing was just pushing forth prophecy. And that's a word right there. Hallelujah. The oppression of the devil in your life is just pushing forth prophecy. Glory be to God. Over in the book of Micah, the fifth chapter, I want to read in your hearing verse two. But you, Bethlehem, you freight this, though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth are from of old, from everlasting. Oh, hallelujah. This prophecy was just confirming who Jesus was. Glory be to God. Huh? When that devil is on your back, hallelujah. When that devil is trying to destroy you through people, know, hallelujah, that you are in the right place. Hallelujah. The devil don't mess with anybody that is not a threat to his kingdom or is not going to do anything for God. Uh, hallelujah. So when you feel oppression, when you see people, you know, the devil using people, just know they're pushing you into your prophecy. Hallelujah. That has been spoken over your your life. Jesus was the Messiah. Hallelujah. He was the one sent from heaven, the son of God, son of man. Hallelujah. Lion of the tribe of Judah, Judah, son of David. Hallelujah. The most high God, God, the father, God, the son, and God, the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. Jesus, the Messiah, our savior walked on this earth in the flesh and he needed, hallelujah, this prophecy. It was prophesied about him. Hallelujah. So yeah, Yes, he had to go there to be, hallelujah, registered. And yes, he did fulfill the prophecy that was over his life. Look, hallelujah, when the devil is on your tracks again, look for God to, to see what God is doing, how God is going to reveal to you, you know, even deeper things of your prophecy over your life. Hallelujah, knowing that God is in control. Verse 4 declares, Joseph also went up from Galilee in the gospel of Luke, the second chapter I'm reading from, out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. Verse 7 says, And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. Oh, hallelujah. There's so much more to life this life that we live, this day to day that we see, you know, going on today, there's so much more to life than the hustle and the bustle and the trials and, you know, the things that are the going on in this world, you know, the wars and the rumors of war and all of the things, all of the distractions that the enemy has placed before God's people. Oh, there's so much more. God kept his word. His son, the son of God, was born to a virgin. Hallelujah. She gave birth to the creator, the sustainer, the ruler of all things. And this gives us hope to know that, you know, what we see here on earth is nothing. What really matters is our relationship with God. Uh, what really matters is what are you doing with that name of Jesus? Uh, what really matters is what are you speaking about? Who are you telling the world about? Who are you standing with? Are you standing with the Savior that left heaven and came down here on this earth through a virgin? 
God, hallelujah, by his spirit imparted God in the flesh, in the womb of a virgin. If we think about that, nothing else matters. What really matters is how many people are going to heaven because you have spoken to them about the Lord. How many people have been delivered because you have told them about the power of God? How many people, hallelujah, have been saved because God used you to speak forth his word? Hallelujah. We don't save anybody. Jesus is already saved. But what are you doing with this power that God has given us and this word that God has given us, this message of deliverance that can set the captive free, this message of hallelujah, salvation that can call someone to miss hell and go to heaven. Hallelujah. And spend eternity with God. What really matters to you? Hallelujah. Is it what you possess on this earth? Are you living to live again in heaven? Hallelujah. Jesus has done his part. This great son of God, God in the flesh, Emmanuel, has done what no one else can do. Oh, he's a great God. Hallelujah. And if we begin to look at the majesty of our God, to look at the sovereignty of our God, the providence of our God, to know that he can do anything, to know that he is with us. Hallelujah. To know that he has proven how much he loves us. In that he gave his only begotten son. Oh, I love him today. Hallelujah. And what really matters to me, and I hope it matters to you, is the relationship that we have with God. What are you doing? What really matters in your life? Verse 8 declares, Now there was in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. That's for us to this word. Hallelujah. It says in verse um, 11, for there is born to you this day in the city of David, a savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, laying in a manger. And suddenly there was a, there was with the angel, a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace goodwill toward men oh I got excited when I read that um, verse number 12 and 13 hallelujah because you know what here it was lying in a manger God had created himself in a human being had made the holy spirit overshadow mary and created a body for himself to be born hallelujah into this world and oh yes the angels wanted to come see come marvel at what god had done look at god i could just imagine all of that host of heavenly angels you know the armies of the living god coming to see their commander in chief look what you have done hallelujah it was worthy of praise worthy to be you know seen by all what a glorious thing our God has done. This is what really matters. Hallelujah. That Jesus came into this world and gave his life for us. That's what really matters. Now, what are you doing with all of this goodness that he has done for us? Glory to God. Hallelujah. In the highest because he's worthy. Verse 15 to says, and it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven. The shepherds said one to another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem 
and see this thing which is to come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the same which was told them concerning this child. You know, the message that the angel had given them that they would um, find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, laying in a manger. And it says in verse 7, uh, 18, and all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had seen, had heard and seen, and it was told unto them. See, nothing about Jesus' birth was ordinary. Hallelujah. The fact that he came down from heaven, that he was born of a virgin, and that a wicked king, when he heard that there was a the real true king being born, he sought to kill every male child. And the fact that his mother had to travel for, you know, on the donkey to deliver him. And the fact that there was no room for him. You know, when Mary and Joseph made it to that place, there was no room for our Lord. There was nothing ordinary about an angel appearing unto the shepherds. And you know what? It is not unusual to do such great things for a king. See, Jesus could have just come on the scene and, you know, no recognition of his royalty, no recognition of anything. This was God Almighty in the flesh. Hallelujah. And he deserved everything that came his way as far as, you know, the shepherds bringing the frankincense and the myrrh. You know, that's nothing compared to what Jesus left behind. Truly, he is the son of God and truly he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Uh, truly, there is none like him. He deserves all glory, all honor and all the praise. Verse 21 says, and when eight days were completed for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Now, when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were completed, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two pigeons. Verse 25 says, and behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So he came by the spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him, according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation hallelujah which you have prepared before the face of all peoples a light to bring revelation to the gentiles and the glory of your people israel hallelujah one of the things 
that I love about the Lord, you know, many things, there's so much to love about him. But one thing that I love so much about the Lord, the you know, despite the fact that he's just awesome, I can't even get past that part because he's an awesome God. <laughs> but one of the things that I love about the Lord is that every promise, every covenant that he has made or spoken out of his mouth has come to pass. For God cannot sin. Therefore, he cannot lie. He's not like mankind that sins, but he is the redeemer of all. Hallelujah. And that is exactly what he did. He sent his only begotten son, Jesus, to save us from our sins. He's a great God who proves over and over again that he is Lord. Hallelujah. And he never forgets. I love how, you know, this prophecy was spoken unto uh, Simeon, that Simeon was told that he would not see death. You know, he was going to live until he saw the Messiah, you know, Christ, the Lord's Christ, this anointed one. That's what Christ means, anointed one. You know, the Messiah, the son of God. And I like how Simeon, he even let us in on the fact that, you know, this was something that Gentiles was included as well, because it says in verse 32, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles. You and I, those who are not of the Jewish nation, it was to Jesus to bring the light to all of us. All of us benefited from this Messiah that came into the world. Hallelujah. And I like how he said to, um, Simeon, and I think we can apply this to our lives. He said, the angel said in verse 26, it, and it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And you know, as I pondered on that, the Lord just began to reveal to me, some of us have loved ones that are not saved. Hallelujah. Let's grab hold of this. Hallelujah for our loved ones that they will not see death until they have seen or come to Jesus. Hallelujah. A lot of us need to pray this and, and stand on this word for our children and for our family members that are not saved, that they shall not die before they have seen the Lord's Christ. 33 Hallelujah. of the Gospel of Luke, the second chapter declares, And Joseph and his mother, Joseph and Mary, the mother of Jesus, marveled at the things which were spoken of him. What Simeon had just said and told them of the prophecy that Simeon had received that he would not leave this earth until he had seen the salvation that was to come, you know, the Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah, and his eyes had laid hold of Jesus, the promised one in that temple. Verse 34 says, then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, behold, this child, Jesus, hallelujah, and I put Jesus' name there, but the scripture says, behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel. We can think about how um, Paul, how he um, rose up in Jerusalem. We could speak about Peter, how he fell and then was risen back up, you know, to position, how he fell when he denied Christ. We can even think about Judas, how Judas, who he walked alongside of Jesus, but yet he betrayed the Lord. And um, we can go on and on of how, you know, there would be a rising and a fall in Israel and for a sign which will be spoken against. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also. Yes, Mary being the mother of Jesus, the one that birthed him into this world. She would have to suffer as well to see her son, you know, the Christ 
to be crucified and betrayed by his own people. It says that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. See, Jesus was going to have to go to the cross. It was going to be a painful time for Mary to see him nailed to the cross. But oh, what joy when Jesus, who was crucified, buried, and rose again. Oh, what joy to see the Messiah. Yes, he went through a lot, but he came out triumphant. Oh, thank God today for the Savior of the world. And pray for Israel, Jerusalem. Even as I speak today, they're under attack. And we know spiritually why the enemy, speaking of the devil, because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. And that devil is the one that hates Jerusalem. Why? Because that's where the Savior came from, the birth of our Lord and Savior who came out of that part of the world who redeemed mankind and that's what the enemy fights against he can't stop it now because jesus has already risen the victory has already been given to our lord but oh he can certainly make the lives of people pretty hard but i thank god for our Lord and Savior Jesus who's given us the victory and causes us to triumph. Yes, Israel will triumph because they are the apple of God's eye. And when you touch God's people, you better know that God is watching. And just like he allows them you know, to do that to Israel because God is in control, he's going to circle back on them and watch what God will do. Verse 36 declares without giving someone the opportunity to give their life to the Lord. You know, in the days and the hours and the time that we are living in now, it demands that you know who you are, who you belong to, and where you are going. And so I want to give you the opportunity to give your life to the Lord. If you have not heard the story, the Bible declares that we were all born sinners. It says over in the book of Romans, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that transpired back in the book of Genesis where Adam disobeyed God. And because of Adam's disobedience, sin and death entered into the world. And so Jesus, who was was God's sacrificial lamb because a price had to be paid for the sins of the world. So God sent in John 3 16, he says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So that's what I want to give you the opportunity to do today, to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, to wash away all of your sin. Romans 10 9 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, the Bible says you shall be saved. Romans 10 13 says, if you call on the name of the Lord, he will save you. So just repeat this prayer after me. Also, if you have walked away from the Lord, come on back home. Just say, Lord, I confess that I am a sinner. I'm sorry for the wrong that I have done. Please forgive me. I invite you to come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. I denounce Satan. I declare that Jesus is Lord. I believe that he died, that he was buried, and that he rose again. And now that I am your child, please fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you have said that prayer, God bless you. Welcome to the family of God. Know today all of heaven is rejoicing because you have chosen to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior. Welcome again to the family of God.